guys, it's B. Scott here for another episode of Ride Along. We are in the Six Nations, Ontario, and we are here with B. Man Messiah. What's up, guys? Scott, boy. Yo, yo. And Troublemaker. Whoop, whoop. We just had the most craziest night. I'm not going to spoil it because you need to wait and see the videos. We filmed a lot of content. You guys are going to see. It was a fun night. We definitely have to come back here because this place is pretty creepy. But yeah, guys, uh, let's talk about, Continue on Chiefs Wood Road, I guess, what happened on wrestling this week. Oh, and one more thing. My hole! Ow! <laughs> Who oh wants to God. start? Me. Okay. Are talking about wrestling? Yeah, we're talking about wrestling. I think Edge is going to... I'm just going to say this right off the top. I think Edge is going for Roman Reigns. One, because, like B-Man said, Battle of the Spears. And also, Edge has never won the Universal title. So, I think it just makes sense. Yeah, okay. it's a possibility. I mean, I, 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 I do agree with that, but at the same time, I really don't know. I, I know he's not going after Balor, like, even though he was apparently on NXT. I'm pretty sure he's not going after Finn Balor, so that only leaves either McIntyre or Reigns. But speaking of which, uh, we heard apparently the... Okay, th this was a weird, weird opening segment on Raw, because basically... Um, Adam Pierce was there, and then uh, he brings out Shane McMahon of all people, right? I saw that. Yeah, so he brings out Shane, and then Shane's talking about like, "Oh, you got, we're we're announcing uh, the Elimination Chamber match for the pay per view," and then they announce the participants, and Shane's just like, "Good job, Adam. I'm out of here." Basically, I think that was just to make it a bigger feel with Shane McMahon. Okay, but that was that was weird though, because then like he he. Sorry, and then he so then he's like there, and then you see him in like a backstage segment after the commercial break with Drew McIntyre, and that's it. Shane's gone. Okay, so I don't know if I talk, I don't know if I talked about this in like a previous ride along, but um, there was a moment on Talking Smack the other day where Paul Heyman pretty pretty much told Adam Pearce that he had to make an announcement for the Elimination Chamber or he was going to get fired. Paul Heyman. Not even an authority figure. But Paul Heyman was making a point where it's like, you gotta realize, Adam, that Edge, like, it, he's, it seems like he's pulling the strings for you and all this sort of stuff. It seems like Edge has the edge on you or whatever. <laughs> you know? And um, then Paul Heyman's like, the WWE uh, uh, advertising team, they have to, you know, then they have to start making the, like, making the flyers, pressing it out, getting, getting everything. So he's like, you know, if, you know, there's a good chance that you probably, you know, your last working day might be like next Friday night SmackDown because you might be fired. Uh, and um, you got to start making uh, executive decisions about the main event for the pay-per-view elimination chamber. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. And uh, basically, you know, um, with Shane McMahon being there and whatnot, it kind of... I kind of felt like that Elimination Chamber match should have not even included the champion. Um, I kind of felt like it should have been a number one contendership for Fastlane. But hey, you know, I guess uh, Adam Pierce didn't have a lot of time to think on his feet, so he just kind of put, he just kind of whipped something together. Like, it doesn't even make much sense to put Miz in it, because if Miz wins, then like, what happens to that money in the bank? Right? I don't know. I think that Miz should, um, be at the end with McIntyre and McIntyre beats him and Miz is like I'm cashing in right now I want to continue because that's never happened so or what if uh, by chance Miz wins takes that belt goes to Mania retains and then at the end of the night cashes in on the Sunday night or and un becomes undisputed or he wins the belt or he um, yeah he wins the belt he defends it at Mania he loses then demands his rematch right after he loses and wins it back I was I was gonna say um, what I think I, I don't I don't see the point of Miz being in the match either because he is Mr. Money in the Bank. But what I'm thinking could maybe happen is like Miz is one of the first two that starts off the match and he gets eliminated right away and then he comes back at the end of the match and cashes in.
I don't see. I actually, though, I don't see Miz like holding on to the title going either know, going into. I think Miz with his money in the bank every week. I almost feel like he's gonna lose when he cashes in. I'm almost starting to think it's a fake money in the bank. <laughs> like it's not a real thing, which is kind of upsetting because I want him to be champion. Well, he's he probably will be. Just I don't think it'll be anywhere around Mania season. But he doesn't have that much longer to cash in. He only has until the next Money in the Bank pay per view. Okay, so can you remind me again who exactly is in this uh, chamber? It's uh, McIntyre, of course, Jeff Hardy, Sheamus. Which and this is another thing. This is weird because the week prior to this one, they had they basically set up a match between Drew McIntyre and Sheamus for the title. Drew McIntyre, like, you, you saw Sheamus, like, broke kick McIntyre at the opening segment, and then Drew said later on, he says, okay, Sheamus, you want a match? You've got one. Yeah, so, like, what the fuck happened? That's eh, WWE for you. Yo, actually, I saw a segment in the back where Sheamus was giving uh, Adam uh, some shit. Cause yeah, because like, he put him in the chamber match, and he was, he was supposed to get a, he was supposedly supposed to get a one-on-one match with Drew McIntyre. That's what he was so mad about. Yeah, yeah, and I would be mad, too, Right? Like, like, what are you doing? Like, the match should have still happened, to be honest with you. Yo, I, I think the chamber match, the participants are, like, the wrong people, man. Well, also, also, the also we got... the names, literally, put them all in there. Yeah, exactly, because, okay, so here's... Here, I, I mentioned uh, McIntyre, Sheamus, uh, Miz, of course, is in the match, Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles are all in the Elimination Chamber for the WWE title. So here's the thing. That's all. That's basically all their big stars. That's all they have. So, yeah. and people were talking about like, oh, what about qualifying matches? Like, well, who else do you see being in this match? Freaking Ricochet. See, made him like a sorry. They made him look like a doofus for like a month or two, and then he suddenly gets into gets into a title match. Now, what I was gonna say is like, you should have people like Bro and Keith Lee. Well, that's, I was getting to that, too, because uh, Matt Riddle and Keith Lee are both feeding with Lashley, and they're going to be in a triple threat match for the United States title on the pay-per-view. You know, so, like, it doesn't doesn't make that much sense to me. Like, like those guys are competing every week. They're there. They're the stars. Right, but I'm saying they're going to be in. Riddle is feeding with Lashley since, like, the late last year, and now Keith Lee's entered into the mix because he had a match with Riddle on Raw. Or he won, and then Bobby Lashley come out and attack them both. So now they they both in the they both get a U.S. title match. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw that all go down. Plus, Lashley's on a loose cannon. Yeah, he's vicious, and I actually kind of like that. I'm thinking maybe he should be the one to challenge McIntyre for the title at Mania. Yeah, man, that's seriously. I, I don't know. Like in my head, and I know this is really like unrealistic, but. I just thought, man, if Lashley eliminated as many people as Lesnar, maybe plus one, at the Rumble, and then instead of going for a title, he's just like, I want to challenge Brock. I don't care. I want to challenge Brock. That would have been sick. That would have been kind of funny. It would have been a first. I don't know if Brock's even under contract right now, though. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know why they threw Matt Riddle in that triple threat. I mean, he lost to... Yeah, he lost, like, twice. Yeah, he lost to Keith Lee, man. He'd, like, keep it at Lashley and Keith, Keith Lee, like... Why throw Riddle in there just because Lashley attacked him? Like, yeah, well, that's WWE logic for you. Getting attacked by the champion equals getting a title match, apparently. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that is kind of whack. Like, I would personally, again, like, it should have been, like, a, a number one contendership type thing, man, in that chamber match. And Sheamus and uh, uh, Drew McIntyre should have had, like, a, like a no-holes bar or a bar room brawl. Well, I think the reason why they didn't do that is because they want to keep it ambiguous as to Edge is, who Edge is going to challenge. So if they have a number one contenders match for one pit, one title, then it's going to pretty much telegraph who Edge is challenging for. Because who in the because why would Edge in his right mind want to be involved in a triple threat match or something, right? Um, like yes and no, but like the show must go on. You know, like we but can't just having Edge undis- indecisive and shit makes people want to keep tuning in. Exactly. Apparently apparently he's going to wait till after the, the Elimination Chamber to choose who he's going to challenge. Yo, that promo we cut on Miz was sharp, though. Yeah. Yeah, that was entirely- That was good. It was just like, you're content with being awesome. I was awesome 20 years ago. That was the sickest promo. Ever. That was a good promo. Edge is killing it with promos. He really is. Yeah, he's a smart dude. He's like, he doesn't have the most, like, 
punchlines or slogans like The Rock, but he just comes to the point and says it like it is and speaks very intelligently, and I, I rate them. Almost like a CM Punk. CM Punk, I'd say, is better on the mic. It's hard to touch, yeah. but Edge is good. I agree. And also, so far, apparently, we've got a women's Raw Women's title match going on for the Chamber Oscar versus Lacey Evans, which Lacey Evans got because she beat Charlotte Flair by disqualification. So, yeah, that's a thing. I kind of think that Lacey might win, unfortunately. I'd rather see Oscar win, but well, it, I don't know. Lacey might win, and I would, her and Charlotte will face a mania. Yeah, I was going to say, like, as much as I don't like the thought of having Charlotte Flair having another title opportunity, and as much as I like Asuka as champion, I have to be frank here in the fact that she hasn't really been able to do much with the title. That's not that's not entirely her fault, but I think if it makes it more interesting, then yeah, I guess I have Lacey Evans hold the title for a little bit so Charlotte can take it off of her at Mania. Yeah, she looked like she lost, like, to Alexa Bliss. Asuka, yeah. AJ, Hardy, Miz, Sheamus. Drew. I said Sheamus. Orton, yeah, okay. So Orton is in the chamber. I forgot. I think he is. What do you guys think about that Keith Lee Matt Riddle match though? I didn't see. Oh that. man, dude. That was that was crazy. I'm a big fan of both of them. I am too. I just wish they were. I just wish WWE would give them more to do, yeah. especially Keith Lee. What's up? I'm just checking. Uh, yeah. Also, like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, it's gonna be a cool chamber match, but this, like, I know for a fact Jeff Hardy. In 500 like, meters, continue straight onto Pauline Johnson Road. You know, like, man, Jeff Hardy's in there to do Swanton Bomb off the top, of something high, maybe. He's getting old, but... I don't know. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like, his back is apparently really messed up. Oh, yeah. I'm not surprised after all the... Continue straight onto Pauline years. Johnson Road. Oh, I'm not really really kidding me. Anymore. Is it still filming? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what the Sorry, guys, but my <laughs> thing just... Oh, the camera thing I, just... Fell. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Sorry, guys. I don't know why it does that. I really don't. That's My never... cousin really wants to see Drew McIntyre and Sheamus at Mania. I understand why. They have a backstory, but I don't know. Sheamus? Man. He's had his time, man. He's kind of there to put people over, man. Sheamus has done it all. Though. Everything. Yeah, it's, well, he hasn't been Intercontinental Universal Champion, but yeah. Yeah, but everything Pauline else, Johnson like, road for six kilometers. compared to everything he has done, those two titles are easy to achieve. King of the Ring, Money in the Bank, Royal Rumble. All he needs is an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Maybe, maybe they should give him that. But he doesn't need any more feathers in his cap. Yeah. That's also the same day that... Are you fucking kidding me right now? MLB The Show comes out. Plugging that, because I think that... That... Uh, Brady will be playing it that day. And as well, on Saturday... If you... If you uh, subscribe to our Facebook and our Twitch... Brady... We... I got the Friday the 13th game. Horrible game. Uh, the graphics aren't that good. So basically, one person plays as, as a Jason... And one person plays as the camp counselor. And basically, if you're the camp counselor, you have to survive from Jason. And then if you're Jason, you have to kill the camp counselor. Um, it's it's pretty much not a good game. Like, there's no story mode. You can either pick to play at, like, Jarvis' house. Or you can play at, like, the lake where he's from or whatever. 
I, I don't really like that game personally, but, you know, it, it was okay. tried sometime. Yeah, the yeah. premise of it, the existence of it. Yeah. You know, like, I look up to Jason as a war role yeah. model. Yeah. You know I mean? Come over and play it sometime, yeah. <laughs> also, speaking of horror people, there's this band called the Merkins. I don't know if you guys have heard of them. And basically, they dress up as Freddy Krueger, Leatherface, uh... Jason and they sing like different songs like they'll sing like like a Backstreet Boys song they do like Britney Spears but like they do it like in their own horror way if you guys go on and you uh, subscribe to their Facebook I think they're called the Merkins yeah oh okay. yeah yeah no, I, you I, know. I saw some of their content yeah it's actually pretty good So, as you guys may have seen, last week I uploaded two uh, Rando Not videos. So this week, I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to upload one on, I think, Friday morning is when I upload them. I don't remember. I don't have in front of me. And then I'm going to film another one Friday night with B-Man and Eli. We're, uh, we're going to go out somewhere near B-Man? He says there's a, there's a park near him. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, we're going to film something out there. So yeah, can't wait for that. And maybe like we'll do some more Randall Nuts, who knows? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so um, there's a thumbs down for me on no Alexa Bliss this past Monday. Oh, so what the heck, are they still, are they honestly still continuing the Roman Reigns-Kevin Owens feud? Yo, that was sick. Because you know what? That that cannot rest after Royal Rumble. Okay, like Kevin Owens pretty much won that match. But he's but already. Be, I mean, it's special. It's special shenanigans. But he's lost three times. Yeah, exactly. Like if he's gonna fight for it again, he has to win. They can't have him lose four straights. Huh? Like it makes him look really kind of. I don't. Know. And he does deserve it, man. Like Kevin Owens is sick. Yeah, what? He was only Universal Champion once. Once, yeah, man. Like, give him another run. Roman Reigns is in, like, four Mania main events in a row. Give something to Owens, man. Like, Owens is crazy. Right, but I feel like they're going to... Owens gonna... and Edge would be fucking sick. I think they're going to give Reigns another main event because of the fact he missed it last year. Like, he needs it. Oh, he missed it last year. He had four the year prior. Like, I don't know. Wait, Four in a row. He missed what last year? What? Roman. He missed the main event last year against Goldberg. Uh, yo, what was... Okay, so what was the year that uh, he fought Undertaker in the main main event? 33. How many... What WrestleMania are we on? 37. Yeah, it's just 37. Holy crap, where have I been? <laughs> the only main event he's... Where he hasn't... Like, the only time he's been at a WrestleMania and hasn't been the main event was when he was starting out with the Shield, and then at 35, he was in the mid-card with Drew McIntyre. And then of course last year, but he wasn't there last year. But I'm not even, I'm not even sure John Cena's had four WrestleMania main events in a row. Nope. I know. I know he had 21, and I think 20, 21 he wasn't even in the main main event. Though. Yeah, that's true. 22 he was, and I'm pretty sure 23. Yeah, 23, 24 he wasn't. 25. He was 300 meters. Turn right onto Lost Mile Road. 27 he was. 28 he was. 29 he was. 30 he wasn't. So we had three years in a row, but not. Speaking yeah. of three years in a row, we got we got the the, the theme and the hat and the places for the next three WrestleManias. Yeah, I think yeah. one of them's Las Vegas, isn't it? I do miss those stadium Take shows. Take the next right onto Lost Mile Road. Damn right. WrestleMania just has a nice feel into the stadium, even if it's not the greatest show. The fact that it has that atmosphere just makes it like. Ten times better just because, you know? And they're finally supposed to have fans this year, too. Turn left I wonder if they're going to do that Super Bowl thing where they have cardboard people. Yo, the Super Bowl had real fans there. Yeah, some it did. It had some. cardboard people, too, though. Yeah, it, it did have cardboard people. So I would really like to see actual, like, you know what? Even though it's not me, I want to see people in that audience. WWE's already said that they're not going to have the paper cutouts. Really? So yeah. it's going to be fans next to each other? 
probably. Or like to do Yeah, that was kind of like. Take the next left onto Thompson Road, then turn right onto Alberton Road South. It's Thompson. Yeah. Yeah, Thompson. Yeah, I think that was kind of the the cardboard cutout thing. I think that was kind of like. I don't know, because you had to pay like $100 to get your cardboard cut out. But I mean, like, what are the odds? Next right onto Alberton Road South. What are the odds that you were going to see your cardboard cut out on camera, right? Exactly. Like, to me, if it's not on camera, it ain't worth it. Continue on Alberton Road South for three kilometers. No, but you know, like, here's the thing. If you're following someone, they will definitely get a photo of their character themselves cardboard cut out sent to them and then that will be shared on the socials you know what i mean so like fans of that person will be like yo mike tyson was at WrestleMania, huh? you know what i mean like i like, guess yeah and it's just because like like big celebrities man they got their followings and they're gonna show love regardless of I think it's Orton and the Fiend and Mania, though. I hope so. So we know Orton ain't winning the chamber. I would like to see the Fiend do something in the chamber. Yeah, maybe he will. Anyways, uh, does anyone else have anything to add? Anything else we want to talk about? Anything exciting? Well, smack. Not a whole hell of a lot. I don't even remember. Oh, Kofi Kingston's back on Raw now, too. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, I don't remember anything. I always thought it would have been sick if Kofi won money in the bank and cashed in on Lesnar and beat Lesnar as quick as Lesnar beat him. <laughs> that would never happen on Vince's watch. No. Oh, yeah. It's other than redoing the spark of uh, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns on SmackDown and Bianca Belair sharing some of the victory speech. I think I skipped most of SmackDown. Oh, well, I remember there was a triple threat Intercontinental title match. Big E versus Apollo and Sammy. That was a decent one. Who's the third person in that match? It was Big E, Apollo Crews, and Sami Zayn. Oh, Sami Zayn. Yeah. Yo, Sami Zayn's got one of the best characters right now, yo. Conspiracy theories. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I feel, yo, I feel sorry for the guy holding the camera. Because if he has to hold it all 24 7. Is that like a documentary crew? It's, 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 it's just his gimmick. It's yeah, not, I know, I, no, I, know I know. Yeah, it's so funny. You know what's funny? When the guy first came, the, first, the documentary guys first came out, I didn't get a very good look at it, so I thought one of them looked like fucking Kevin Pillar. Oh. One of the old, <laughs> one of the old Blue Jays players. I thought it looked like him for a split second. I'm like, is that Kevin Pilar? Like, no, it couldn't be. But, um, yeah, no, I don't think there's that much else really to talk about. Except uh, next week, uh, we'll probably be doing our Elimination Chamber predictions, and I'm still working on, I'm still working out the kinks, but I got an announcement. In 500 meters, turn right onto Wilson Street West. I got an announcement regarding that coming next week, so stay tuned for that, guys. So I think that should about wrap it up. All right, Scott. guys. I think we're pretty much out of Six Nations. We're now in Ancaster. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace out, Peace out guys. Take the 